What's up, everybody? This is Illiterate. This week, we are covering Lal Shing Shaddad. My name is Evan. I just checked out the remake of Forrest Gump in theaters. I'm hanging out with Taylor. Taylor, how are you? Good, good. This week, I looked into modern Indian history. Lord. A full stop, licensed, Paramount's behind it, remake of Forrest Gump has been produced and released theatrically, a Bollywood remake of Forrest Gump. I kind of jumped at the opportunity, honestly, to kind of, to go and check this out because I I had a whole bunch of questions pop up in my mind. I was just like, <laughs> are there Bollywood remakes of every single thing? And I have no idea. Is there like an Aliens I'm missing? You know, like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, I, I went off in a thousand different directions. Obviously, if you've been following the show, we cover a ton, a ton of adaptation. This is a story driven show. We're looking at the material and how it changes hands. This just, I mean, baby, fits right in the pocket. This was fascinating, top to bottom. <laughs> it's blown up right now because it's just been released in the theaters, but it is not doing well. And it's kind of left at the obvious question of like, well, well why did you, <laughs> why did you do it? So we're going to get into it. I can't wait. Yeah. This is incredible. But maybe we should start with Forrest Gump and being that, it, you know, with, there's a thousand things you could go and watch on Forrest Gump and you know, comparing the book to the movie. Yes, it was a book. Uh, the Zemeckis <laughs> film in the early 90s you, on, the onset of the, on the onset of CGI. This is more obviously about this remake uh, and then comparing the two, the film, really, we're going to get down to the screenplay to a little bit. But yeah, so yeah. I, <laughs> let's start with Forrest Gump. Forrest Gump a little bit for those that know written by Eric Roth, who most recently wrote Dune and is writing Lord. Dune Part 2. He's, I mean, he's done a bunch of other stuff as well, but very old school Hollywood screenwriter, like you said, adaptation of a novel, Winston Groom's Forrest Gump from 1986. Very different from the book in a couple different ways, which yeah. maybe would surprise some people if you've seen and loved Forrest Gump. Big things that they flipped were the love story being major and the fantastical adventure stuff more secondary he also hmm. just has a ton of smaller wacky things going on he's an astronaut he's a wrestler he's a chess master even more a man they crammed more yeah. in there yeah they kind of oh, go so from the love chapter, story is less because yeah. this really yeah. hinges to me in my mind this is all about this is all <laughs> hinges on about jenny story. Yeah. so but it's less in the book eh definitely and wow. I, I think i had read that the because i haven't read the book but the book and movie go along until chapter 11 and then they basically jump to the end when he reunites wow. with Jenny and he's got a kid and all of that stuff and so yep, 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 Winston yeah, yeah, Groom yeah. was not opposed to this necessarily the book was also the Gump character was and the book in general was cynical and colder Gump mm -hmm. is also more of a mathematical savant not necessarily mm -hmm. just going through on the, you know, riding the sail right. through the whims of fate and history and accidentally changing things. Gotcha. Um, okay. For those that know actors, Winston Groom, when he was writing it and then thinking about it becoming something else, had more envisioned a John Goodman esque person mm -hmm. as That's Forrest Gump. Which does, if you think about that, if you know what he looks yeah. like and acts like, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. a more And I get colder, the tonal yeah. difference there too with it. Uh, and not that, you know, yeah, that, 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 <laughs> that, that hmm, I like it. I kind of like that. <laughs> <laughs> so that's how the book and film are different. And Winston Groom was like, yeah, they took the rough edges off of the character. They added also the big, one of the big things is him running across the country and the leg braces. Mm. All of that was not a part of the book so that's a big piece that people resonate with wow. that was not yeah. in there so yeah just to clarify some of it too with talking about oh it's this positive he's just going through and making everybody's life you know see the good in things and all that there is sort of a modern criticism of Forrest Gump that's happened in the last decade where it's presenting this more candy-coated American dream bumbling to victory but sidelining <laughs> the counterculture movements as just these weird things in the backdrop when it's right. actually like, no, the hippie movement, the AIDS epidemic, civil rights, like all of these things. And Forrest Gump just has the privilege to kind of bumble mm -hmm. around them as they're happening in American history. So that's if one wanted to think of it as in a. But then you could also look yeah. at it and then flip it on, on on the other side and be like, well, you know, it is discounting all of those yeah. things. And there's something to be saying about that point of view. 
Um, right. So I can see that in the film as well. That's that's, that's what. Yeah. <laughs> the other thing that Jenny and her life and the connection to him, where he can't get away from it and he wants it, that's the reconciliation of the two. Mm-hmm. Perhaps. I mean, it's film school class one hundred right. two or whatever. But anyways, yeah. Excuse the, me. Yeah. <laughs> the. Uh, the thing that then people said, oh, my God, you know, dozens of Oscars and nominations and all of that. What's happening next? And there was a bizarre sequel that was going to come about. I don't know if you knew anything about this before we get into the well, Bollywood Indian cinema. It's one. been the long uh, it's been fabled the legend, <laughs> mythical, almost, uh, the, you know, almost like Space Jam 2 in a way. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> this this long awaited. Uh, is it happening? Are there are rumors. Maybe there's this. Yeah, I've heard about a sequel to Forrest Gump almost my entire life. Um, and the one that, and it maybe the I'm making this up, but the one that comes up to mind is I had heard an idea of what of him like sitting in a park, like around. I don't know if it was during, but like around the idea of like nine eleven. So, so I, I'll explain yeah, no how idea. all of yeah. that. Oh, fits okay, in. good. Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, the movie came out in ninety four. Correct. The first one. Correct. The novel sequel novel written by the same guy came oh, out God. in 95 it's called gump and co so you can go read the novel it exists and that's what they were basing the screenplay it didn't get written until 2001 by eric roth so it exists like i, I couldn't find it but there is you know wow, they were gonna roth, do it roth yeah. did a follow-up screenplay yeah. yeah based on the novel oh my and God. so the connection was that they had gotten all this packaged ready to go and had submitted it September 10th of 2001. And then the next day, 9-11, of course, Zemeckis, Roth, and Tom Hanks sit around, you know, just ruminating about the future and America and the world and everything. And they're like, maybe a lot of this isn't relevant anymore or reads false or what is this? It kind of, that's how it The world changed under your feet. Yeah, and they're like, what are we saying with this now based on what we know the world to be if we go ahead with all of what this is? Oh, Will it man. even work? And because that's the thing with the f- first movie is that it's very much set in the prosperity of the 90s yeah. America dream. And that's what I was kind of, you know, if it's in the head dream of the Republican Party out of the Reaganism yeah. era, OK, but are they in a head dream and are, there, are we discounting everything on the other side, the counterculture and all right. that? So, if yeah. So if all of that, then we <laughs> prove positive <laughs> uh, came back to bite us. Um, Right. The, yeah. So that the I will say though, since the novel exists, the first page of the sequel novel, it's from his perspective, and I'll read it direct. Don't never let nobody make a movie of your life story. Whether they get it right oh. or wrong, it doesn't matter. So it's a meta book in the sense that the film he's getting taking made, back his character and then commenting on the movie. <laughs> well, it's like he actually lived and the film got made in the 90s and he it was based on his life if that makes sense like the real life events okay. of the film are a part of his life he runs into tom hanks goes on letterman you know it's it's the wow. same premise as forrest gump but it's set in the tumultuous events of the 80s and 90s and so you know he's in the back of oj's bronco and He's oh God, around so for the Oklahoma City bombing, and he's ballroom oh dancing with Princess Diana. It's all of the crazy events. You know, he's like responsible for the Berlin Wall collapse and just a bunch of wild stuff. That I instantly I guess, heard Gump, like Hank's Gump in my head talking yeah. <laughs> about like dancing ballroom dancing with some <laughs> nice lady. He doesn't. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I don't know if they thought uh, it wasn't it wasn't as funny or as. Uh, maybe too edgy and there was just a bunch of stuff where they're like this just doesn't have any meaning anymore post 9 11 what are we trying to do with this what are we saying about america or whatever so anyways that's that's the long and short of it would the... be sick uh you know maybe we're closing out this segment of the show but it would be <laughs> sick at this point now to revisit all of that under the 2020 lens of what happened in the 80s yeah. and 90s yeah it's almost yeah, like take it all and then now, now what have we been through since nine eleven? Take it all, and reassess <laughs> it now. I think that could be interesting. Well, that's kind of Who what. Knows? Now we're at this Bollywood. I guess I will also call it Indian cinema because Bollywood is more the Hindi. Right. I don't want to be insensitive. I don't know the distinction. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's just Indian cinema. Is ev- I mean, there's we did our Bollywood of, episode, or yeah, at least discussed it in our Nollywood Nigerian cinema Nollywood. episode. But. uh 
yeah. So this this version production, the main. I guess if you're curious about like you had said at the top how this came to be in 2022 when the first one came out in 94, right. not too much on how they actually convinced them, but it was just a lot of time. So it's this actor, Amir Khan, who plays Forrest, the Forrest Gump. Lal, oh. that's his name in the... L-A-A-L. Yeah, and when you yeah, see that, it, it, yeah. you're like, oh, you're right. That's his name. So he is pretty close to Tom Hanks in the way audiences perceive him and how his career has gone. So it makes sense hmm. that he is the main person for this. He, the, the way that this got put together, there's another actor, Atul Kulkami, Amir, they were getting to talking and Forrest Gump is one of Amir's favorite films. And so two weeks mm. later, this other actor who is not a writer, he's like, I've written an adaptation of this. Wow. <laughs> and, and, and it's like, oh, that's interesting. But his friend, who is the main actor, the Tom Hanks, Forrest Gump-esque character, doesn't read it for two years. Maybe out of, no. you know, deference and just being nice to his friend. who's like, well, that's great, but this is, what's the point? This is never going to happen. And uh, you're Good not a writer you. and all that stuff. But yeah. uh, then after he reads it, he's like, oh, yeah, we should figure this out. And then, of course, it takes eight years after that wow. to acquire the rights. And then finally, in 2018, the process of getting to make it. And they had got, like I said, there's not much to the history of this, but I had seen that Amir Khan, the main actor, had met with Spielberg. He was trying to connect with Zemeckis, which never happened. He did get to meet Tom Hanks. They were just constantly oh, wow. trying to get it. And because yeah. it's so close to the source material, Eric Roth is credited in this yeah. version, even though he, I, don't, I couldn't find anything where he was working with them at all in any capacity. But it's so well. I mean, close, it, when I—I I mean, my over my overwhelming reaction walking away was that the the Eric Roth version just works. This takes the Eric Roth version and then builds and changes it for yeah. whatever you know for whatever instance that they needed to in the context. But it's obviously built upon Eric Roth's work. So I would there's um there's nothing for Eric to do. He, here it is and then <laughs> right. now it's been rewritten and changed culturally. And that that was the fascinating part of it honestly to go in and look at all of these choices. Um mm -hmm. because there are moments that are are built to to recreate it, but then there are whole uh -huh. segments of it that are new or make a wild completely like opposite choice or put them in a completely <laughs> different situation. So it's just like it, it's really fascinating in that it is a remake. It's, it's mm -hmm. flat out, but there's a <laughs> lot, a lot different. There's a lot new. And I, I, I was just, man, I was uh, overwhelmed, to be honest, on, on a creative level. Um, right. Just looking at the decisions, trying to understand the choices, just fascinating so i mean if well, you're somebody who's yeah. been listening to the show for a while i recommend it just because i mean you've been we've been talking about adaptation and how story changes through yeah. hands this is a crazy example of it with something that we all know i mean gosh of course comes <laughs> one of the biggest deals look at it in a new right. way uh and try to understand how it worked why it worked uh or yeah. maybe i actually saw where they tried to like motivate some things or like change something on purpose because in the English version, it just kind of happens. <laughs> like Dan right. just like falls off the boat and floats away into the ocean. Right. Well, there is no boat and there is no ocean. <laughs> and we have to motivate Dan leaving in some way. So there's a whole different side to that character. That character in particular yeah. is completely different. <laughs> well, let's, um, let's, like, uh, it's a hollow shell, but it's very, <laughs> very different. Yeah. Let's uh, say that for the historical stuff. I wanted to tease out some of the stuff gotcha. that you're, you're mentioning in terms of just the, a bit of the cultural sensibilities or like you're saying, changing it as almost a creative exercise of like, here's a masterwork. How do you yeah. not yeah. just insert elements for the sake of randomness, but seeing how it actually works. And so right. a couple just to pull, which I know you saw, but I'll even post a link to the trailer because you might be able to, even if you can't get your hands on this, just to witness what they're advertising the prime elements are. So like the main thing being, and it's on the poster where he's sitting on the the park bench talking to random people as they pass by. And it's like, that is not a thing in India, from what I could tell. <laughs> it's like, it's loud, it's noisy, nobody does that. Trains are the most used form of transport. And so that's where you talk to people. And that's where as you're a kid and you're going a long distance and you still write the person on their birthday and like, it's... Mm -hmm. You, you, that's where it is set is him sitting on a train as random yeah. people come and go and he's telling his story. And that's 
it would be it would ring false culturally otherwise but it still fulfills exactly. the role yeah and from the first beat i see this is the same story but yeah. it's not <laughs> feeling anchored down by the aesthetic choices of that story culturally where it was southern in the america english version yeah, yeah exactly yeah and then the big other one that i saw was like the i mean the classic box of chocolates metaphor but it's shifted around where he says my mom used to say life is just like a golgapa which are these little pastry savory things but the comparison how it life is like that he says your tummy might feel full but your heart always craves more because mm -hmm. it's a popular street food it's known for not feeling like stopping with just eating one but that is a mm -hmm. different metaphor than the chocolates mm -hmm. and you never know what you're going to get because the american is. version is about going with the randomness of life but if you crave more golgapa it's more about longing for more moments in life yeah which is a completely different thematic lens to pull it through so that's kind of like oh well they just changed it a little bit culturally but the the essence of the story i feel like would be vastly different in well, that way to an know? extent it is yeah. different but it's parallel in a lot of ways because they know exactly what they're doing when that when they set that up because that becomes a the the when it comes time for the mother to pass away that scene is recreated on a visual level very uh -huh. very similar to the english version but what what the scene is about is a is what we're talking about in the in this Indian version is this idea of letting go of things when it's our time to part ways, which mm -hmm. is not dissimilar from what that scene is about in the English version. So while yeah. it's it's not it's not the same thing, it is running parallel and then intersects back in in the mm -hmm. same scene. In, in a very, very similar way. I was fascinated with how that worked. I was paying attention to that exact thing, and they yeah. really knocked it. They really knocked the ball when it came time for the mother's parting scene <laughs> because that exact thing was examined. Uh, and it ends up yeah. in a place that's nowhere, uh, it's nowhere near as different as on its surface if you're looking at just the different metaphor. When you're presenting with the Golgapa on the train, you go, whoa, this is different. Am I going down a really different path? Not exactly. Right. Um, when it, there's yeah. a distinction to a degree for sure, but uh, it was so fascinating to to see those two choices and then to see how it how, how it leveled <laughs> off. So, so speaking of the mom and the family, this is the last cultural difference thing that I'll make note of is the fact that Lal is a Sikh, which is a small religious minority, 2% of India's population. And by the end, he has the beard and wearing the turban prescribed by the faith. Mm -hmm. So that is what I would say is probably looking at all the reviews in the Indian news sites and whatnot and how people are perceiving it compared to who is Forrest Gump in America and his relationship mm -hmm. as a white man. You know, it's not a it's a religious thing versus a race thing, but it's still looking at it from a lot of what happens in Indian history through Lal's perspective does have a mm -hmm. lot to do with how he is a Sikh. And so I think that that maybe colors things differently. But yes, I would say yes. in terms of like, as we get into the historical stuff, we can definitely see, well, that change does throw around. He's not just cruising through the whims of fate of his country and, you know, bumbling around yeah. in, in the same way. But I, I'll I just took say the that visuals. Yeah. yeah, I mean, they go to great lengths to show you, you show you him building his, you know, his turban, like wrapping uh -huh. his, his turban, and that distinction of what it means for the character is pretty obvious. And and that was where I was going. Okay, this is new territory for the yeah. story. There's nothing. There's nothing parallel to this in the original. And I and mm -hmm. I was just like, okay, this is a culture thing. Fine. I'm, I, you know, yeah. I'm here for I'm here for three <laughs> hours. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the cultural thing, which you probably noticed too, in terms of which we talked about in our knowledge. Hollywood, Bollywood episode was the Indian sensibility of, of how music is used for sexuality mm -hmm. replacement. And so that was, which I don't know if you were aware watching it, but they remove a lot of the adult content, all of it basically, and scenes and whatnot. Mm -hmm. It seems almost platonic because of the cultural qualities and censorship and just wanting this to be a thing watched by the entire family. So it is not as provocative in that way. Maybe yeah, it was, it was like obvious yeah. when, you know, the change, the big change is like getting him into the school. 
Oh, uh-huh, right. The, the um, teacher. That's like yeah. the biggest obvious thing is that she just ends up working for the guy who runs the school and like mm-hmm. running his housework because he lost his maid or, or the housework or whatever. You know, uh, yeah, I get. Well, lost it would definitely of, be you know, what the roles are. But, yeah, um, you know, it was another replacement and then just skirted that. I mean, but again, <laughs> yeah. uh, to, you know, looking at the Eric Roth version, settling down into a love story. It's not like it's not like that is missing here that's all that this is <laughs> right right <laughs> right exactly um yeah. so it you know i'm like i'm trying to think of what other like what other more risque moments that were taken out of it like you know she's there's no like dorm room thing that all mm-hmm. happens just like outside but the same story beats happen almost exactly but it's just there's no like yeah. dorm room or being in like underwear <laughs> or anything really like that so yeah yeah um i'm trying to think or like oh yeah so and like jenny is very jenny is a very different character uh yeah. in a lot of ways in terms of like what her motivations are and they change her backstory a bit and yeah. so that changes so there's no need for her to be you know naked singing a bob dylan song that's just <laughs> not where this character is going necessarily so that yeah. was just something that i wouldn't you know you know you know and i'm yeah. like oh i didn't yeah you know, and wouldn't have thought about like that or like getting rid of the nudity like i'm now i'm like what other nudity is there <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I couldn't tell you exactly i don't have a, a spreadsheet of all the nudity in forrest gump but it, it definitely is uh removing or neutering some of that yeah e- edge which could be a i didn't notice I, yeah. I didn't notice and i and i like i was worried about how they were going to get around the school thing so like when it just became what it became i was like delighted i was like oh great yeah. let's get out of here <laughs> yeah yeah so you had it said at the top of the show since we're talking about all these changes they're making it's like are there other films like this is this a indian cinema staple to sort of adjust things or is this a anomaly like I don't right know are had, like yeah is this a bigger <laughs> I've never considered really a, a flat out bold face remake of, of like a yeah. 30 year old American classic <laughs> and your 30 year old American classic. So I'm yeah. like, has, is this a, is this a new thing? Has this been done? What's the precedent for this? Are yeah. we missing out on like Indian <laughs> versions of all our favorite movies? Because that's awesome. I would go yeah. watch all of them right now. So I think looking at this from a bigger lens is hard because I don't know much <laughs> like in the in the research week to week for this, but I did find there's articles of like 50 Bollywood Indian cinema movies based on Hollywood movies. And it's like, mm-hmm. are they loose? Are they, you know, they, obviously these premises, it's like saying, oh, Clueless is based on, you know, a Jane Austen right. thing. So it's, like, there's no there's like some of that Indian stuff. Asylum Studios that's like pumping out direct like parallel Right. Or, like, yeah, or it's what's somewhat out at the theaters similar. this week. Yeah, okay. But I did see there are things that are close and enough to mention, oh, this is inspired by this versus, mm-hmm, oh, they mm-hmm. directly went to Paramount to get the rights for Forrest Gump because it's almost sometimes shot for shot. <laughs> like, we could not do this yeah. otherwise. But Go some of the two yeah. Forrest Gump social media pages right now. Yeah. If, <laughs> if, like, if, if you, this is all new to you and this is fascinating, just go to any social media page for Forrest Gump and Paramount Pictures. You're going to find this. And, 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 I, and I found it weeks ago and was just like amazed because I've never considered this before. Yeah. There's, so the, I found some movies where they did say, oh, well, this is heavily inspired by, like, you can't get away from that. They didn't get license from the original thing but it's it's undeniable so the ones that i wanted to pull out are just not even the first time that amir khan has starred in a remake like this so there's three movies that he's done that are already so like 1995 you know throughout this i'm trying my best i've tried to figure out the hindi pronunciation but this Mm -hmm. is not going to be doing it justice but forgive uh, us a tonk high a tonk is inspired by the godfather very much and i'll post a link oh, to if you want to see okay. 95 Good. so it's it's way Good. after again yeah, but that yeah. same yeah that same year again same actor akele hum akele tum is kramer versus kramer essentially oh, wow which is much closer in time frame to when that actually came out mid 90s and then 2008 gajini is chris nolan's memento oh. which had already been done and this is a remake of that Indian film again, but all of those have Amir Khan in them. Oh my gosh! And they're all pretty big Hollywood movies that are heavily inspired by those. So it isn't a gotcha, a, a, gotcha. A, a, a strange thing, I would say, 
but this direct well, it's not, it's not thing is yeah. the first time, you know. Yeah. It's not like this is happening all the time because those are pretty spaced out, but it's happened. That's fascinating. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and like you said, none of those are licensed. None of those right, are as, right. as like, this is, this is the real deal. <laughs> Eric Roth is in the um, credits, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Let's, uh, let's jump to, because you had mentioned this is not doing well. No, it's it's like it's it's wildly flopping right now. Everybody, <laughs> you know, I see the the you know the Indian Express. Uh, while Lao Shing Shao failed, while Rocketry was a success, uh, Lao Shing Shao box office collection day five, American's biggest flop since. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dot, dot, dot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I, I so naturally... yeah, it's not it's not really doing that well. So that brings me back to my initial reaction is you know I was like why who what how <laughs> why why would we do this? But anyway, I went into the criticism then of this to try and figure it out, and came up with some interesting scenarios for why this wouldn't work, tying into both film and culture. So the mm-hmm. first one, film wise, because like we said, Amir Khan, big Tom Hanks s character. He's done this several times to great success. Mm -hmm. Uh, He also headlined three big box office hits as of very recently, including the number one film of all time in India. He is the star of that film. And then he's also the number six highest grossing film, which is directed by the same guy who directed this. And he's number he's on number seven highest grossing film of all time. So it's like, seems like a pretty good bet that this right. actor, this director, this subject matter, why not go for it? Uh, yeah. But pretty low numbers. So far, it's only made 11 million on a 22 million budget for the opening mm-hmm. week, which is not great when it comes to this sort of thing. If the other ones are making hundreds of millions of dollars. Yeah, hopefully, yeah. hopefully beyond its theatrical run is where they'll see a bit more of their return. Yeah. So the cultural reasons then, and film reasons why it would not do well, some people are just saying that the audience taste has changed because of streaming during the pandemic. So mm. Indian audiences have just been more exposed to global media. And gotcha. that's why theatrically and culturally it just doesn't resonate as well they're, there's they're sitting around going like we have forrest gump yeah <laughs> <laughs> right so only three bollywood films have been hits in 2022 in india i don't know exactly how that mm. fact you know but also the other thing too is there's a lot more breakthroughs of films being made in south indian languages not just hindi that's why we're saying the bollywood indian cinema distinction so there's just mm-hmm. a overall growth in a lot of different segments and so this is a classical taste making thing that people just said, meh, we've 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 been there where we want different things uh mm-hmm. based on I I got nothing yeah. to say to that. That's perfect. I mean again, if we're building on Eric Roth's work, that's that's work in nineteen ninety three. Yeah, yeah. Um <laughs> With and Tom Hanks, yeah, yeah, the audience. So we're we're building on top of that, and, and we're taking piece, some pieces away, and we're flopping them around. But it is really largely built on that hill. So yeah, that <laughs> hill is built for a '90s sensibility. So yes, yeah. a lot has happened, which is why they never made the sequel, <laughs> and right. more has happened since. So I kind of I get where this type of story perhaps uh, is. You know, we've been there. Yeah. <laughs> Again, yeah, I, and yeah, I and yeah. I think that really hits the nail on the head, though, where we already sit. It is the Indian people are sitting around with their copies of Forrest Gump, going like, "Well, we, we have it, <laughs> or we have so, all these other things that we that are actually and we, yeah, in our exactly. language." We're, yeah, we're yeah. in 2022. We have that. We and we know what we're not sequestered away, living in you know a different planet. So I <laughs> I I totally feel that. I totally feel that. Because the way I went into it, I really went into it looking at these two different pieces. And I really, yeah. I love Forrest Gump. I think it's an incredibly effective film emotionally. I think it's, I, I, I walk away from this going like, it's written incredibly well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, man, <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm sad that it's not doing well because on a creative level, I think it has a lot going for it. And this was not done on cheaply. This was not done uh, anywhere, but from them doing their absolute best. And, and yeah. I you know it just didn't hit the mark. Not what people are interested for. Gosh, yeah. 
Uh, the two, that's, yeah. that's a, a little bit of a shame because like I said, if you're into this type of stuff, if you're into this show, this is really, really interesting. Yeah. <laughs> so there's two other twists to the cultural side of things. The one being this was released on this festival time, the festival Raksha Bandhan, which is the brother, sister, sibling relationship festival. And so it's not usually connected with movie outings or going out. It's a very family, indoors, mm, yeah. relational, being around people for this festival, close platonic kinship. So the not audience even... is doing other things right now. Yes, that relate to not that relate to being together with familial bonds, and yeah. perhaps that's also why this stunk because they released it at this time when a lot of people have not been able to celebrate that maybe in the past two years, and so. Yeah. Uh, why yeah. would you go people see this are, movie? People are together. <laughs> yeah. That makes sense. And then the third cultural thing is boycotting the main actor, Amir Khan. Uh, yeah, I did see that in these headlines, too. Yeah. Where was it? Yeah, yeah. So did Amir Khan's law, Shing Shadon, fail due to boycott call or bad content <laughs> nine hours ago? Yeah, so that's always a thing, regardless of any movie that comes out you're going to have people for or against. He is Muslim, and he had made comments in 2015 criticizing India's religious intolerance, fearing for his family. So this presented him as very anti-Hindu to some people, not having a love hmm. of country to others. And so the, I can't speak what? to a American corollary, but it's there's a certain oh, segment wow. Of India, mm. that's like this man is not yeah. for our country, and so why would you support things that he is, he is in and and promoting? But that's, so, yeah, that's why. I mean, because I, I am from there. I don't know what these <laughs> exactly. events that they have put in there. I only know what Forrest Gump's version <laughs> yeah, of it yeah. was, and I am equating the importance of those events versus what they have swapped out for this yeah. version. And at the end of the day, it's still, you know, Forrest Gump has a national story play out in the background. Yeah. Not unlike Lao Shang Shadan. Yeah. <laughs> the national story does play out in the background. I don't know what it is because I'm not from that nation. I don't know what these touchstones are. But it seems on the outside, totally not knowing what I'm talking about, it seems like, man, well, the whole movie is still like it's to trying to tell a nation's story, and he is in the center yeah. of that. That's <laughs> that's fascinating that that is the criticism levied against it, that he's not for the nation when the whole thing is – about yeah. the nation, I don't know if, you know. Okay, yeah. oh, that's, well, that's like you, that's like you, yeah, yeah. Like you said, with Forrest Gump, it could also be perceived as he's going through these very culturally sensitive situations. In the mm -hmm, case of the U.S. Mm -hmm, civil rights mm -hmm. in Vietnam and Watergate and all kinds of mess, that it's like, mm -hmm. well, is this presenting a critical look at all the the crazy things that have happened in our country in well, this who time? Who was right so, about that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that's, I think, perhaps. Very and because so let's let's talk about now, lastly, these historical events that we're mentioning and dancing and around. Come yeah. Back, yeah, come back to the one that you had said uh, with the Lieutenant Dan corollary. But, you know, it does have a lot of the stuff that Forrest Gump brings the leg disability as military service, the historical figures running like I said, swapping the peace and prosperity of 90s America for the more volatile and nationalistic climate of modern India, because it starts in 77 and goes up to 2018 versus mm -hmm. for, I guess Forrest Gump goes up to the modern times, but the, the segment of history is pushed back, if that makes right. sense, because it's coming right. out now <laughs> versus in 94. So Right. We're not starting in the, in the 50s. We're starting in the 70s. Yeah. I'm I'm going to glance over because, like you said, it's a long movie and there's a ton of stuff. The ones that got the most buzz or are the most interesting in terms of a corollary or at least worth somebody who doesn't know a lick of Indian modern history. Can I, can I ask one? Yeah, yeah. The one that I wanted to know about what was happening more about because, mm -hmm. because it just happens in the middle of another scene is that the mom is walking him home as a child with his gear on his legs and a conflict breaks out in the middle of the streets. And, and nothing, again, we're stepping into completely new territory. Nothing yeah, like yeah. that happens in Forest County <laughs> in Alabama. <laughs> so right. I like, I wanted to know uh, most of the other uh, you know, cultural touchstones are told with an arm's length, very much mm -hmm. how they are presented in, in Forrest Gump. This one uh, unfolds right in the middle of another scene. So I, I, if you know, if you have context for <laughs> yeah, what yeah, that yeah. conflict was, I'm very interested in that one. 
So that it ta- grabbed yeah. me. I was like, what is ha- this is this is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we can definitely start there. It has a lot to do with making Lal a Sikh character. And so he I don't know if this yeah, is the yeah. part or it's after. It's it's all connected in the story, but he bears witness to the 1984 military operation at the Golden Temple, which is a holy site for Sikhism. It was called Operation Blue Star. Shortly thereafter, Prime Minister Indira Gandhi's assassination was carried out by Sikh bodyguards. And so there were all these anti-Sikh riots, quote unquote, you know, massacres, Gosh. as we're yeah. calling things now. And the mom says, oh, don't go out because of malaria. I think that's all factored in in this yes. portion of the script. Yeah, that's all anti-Sikh sentiment at this point in history. See, from my point of view, I'm going, I know that there's a conflict. I get that she's misleading him to a degree, mm-hmm. but I, you know, I'm 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 having to put it together. Uh, <laughs> yeah. up until this point the boy's been presented with a hair bun on his head uh-huh. and then as after this conflict unfolds, uh she has to cut that off because that means she's on the other side. So I get that it's aligning him on a side. I don't like I a Sikh. I didn't hear that yeah. term or it wasn't, you know, like I missed yeah, yeah, that yeah. term. I didn't have the context for that term, but I built up the knowing of, okay, so there's the side here that he's on that. Yeah. And this is a cultural thing that will divide down the line. So this is, fa- this is, this is why this is fascinating. And again, this is where this was really like, it's not like Gump being like devout Christian was like part of that <laughs> right. story. <laughs> There's nothing correlating to it in the American version. No. Yeah, yeah. And very much, I think that's the difference in the first part of the film, which some people said be- benefit. They're like, well, if it's better than Forrest Gump in this way, because the history is happening to him, to Lol, not yeah. just around him. And so yeah. the criticism of Gump is maybe he's more a spectator or for this character versus influencing events. But He's not a white man sharing the responsibility of the country around him because it's happening to him in a sense that he can't he can't not avoid what's going on or just randomly meet John Lennon and (laughs) do this and that, you know. Right. Yeah. It it, it, it ends up indirectly motivating things like him joining the army. Mm hmm. They make an yeah. interesting choice too, where they change the lineage of being in the military from the the Lieutenant Dan character. It always had all of his ancestors went down in all the previous wars. They did that famous, each one of them goes down in each one of the wars. Well, they do that, except it's Law's fa- family, it's mm-hmm. Law's forefathers. Right. Um, so there is this tradition because there's more conflict in this country, and we've seen it unfold now. And so when it becomes time, and he's of age, it makes sense that like yeah, all, every man in our in our uh, in our family has done uh, an extent, uh, an amount of time in the, in the, in the service for the nation. And yeah. we've seen, it's been built up and they use that piece out of Lieutenant Dan. That was my first like hint that Lieutenant Dan was going to be very different is because mm-hmm. we were borrowing a piece of his character for laws for Forrest's character. Yeah. Um, and it ended up directly motivating a piece, a big piece of the already the the story as is him going off to the military, where it's just <laughs> that just kind of happens in <laughs> right the English. Well, and that's also the the comparison is very different in the conflict that is taking place, the Vietnam War, which for a lot of people is a stain on American history and what was even going on and and mm-hmm. the we've covered the 60s yeah. of this show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the the war that is going on is the Cargill war against Pakistan in 1999 and it was okay. only a few months and this is when the Pakistani forces crossed the line of control in India both countries had nuclear capabilities so it was very scary and hairy oh, wow. but there is a surge in patriotism following this because of India's ability to stop it and shame on Pakistan. That's the global sentiment. So it's different, yeah. very different from the Vietnam War because it's not really this darker chapter yeah. in India's history. It is this, there's obviously multiple opinions to this, but from what I could tell, it's different from the Vietnam War and America's relationship in that way, which mm-hmm. also factors into the Lieutenant Dan character in this Huge one, thing. in that he is on the other side. So he is essentially a terrorist which gets saved in the chaos of war, but it's does it's not even like oh this would be like a Vietnamese character in the war because America went to Vietnam. Right. It's not like Vietnam was invading. It's a completely you know? different uh, conceit to that yeah. conflict. Yeah. Uh, which I and again, this is why I was just overwhelmed by how fascinating this is because we're beating through the story, but we're contextually and culturally <laughs> in a completely different place, a completely different time. 
and completely yeah. different motivations that somehow wind us up in the exact same story beats. It was really fascinating. And so there you yeah. go. Now, it, when he's going back looking for the, the Bubba character, mm-hmm. um, he ends up saving by accident an enemy character. And this mm-hmm. becomes the Lieutenant Dan character. And I'm, I'm like, this is crazy. This is so <laughs> much different than, yeah. than yeah. the English version. And then what they do with him, because... Eventually, he has to go away for a little while, and in the English version, he just falls off the boat and floats in the ocean. And we don't. He's just like made it right with God, and I'm like, that's yeah, yeah. really great, and that's really beautiful. But in this version, there is no ocean, and he doesn't have a plight with God. He has a plight with his country's like history yeah. and like what has, what is happening in the world context. And so, spoiler alert: instead of shrimping and boating, they do garments and they do underwear. Uh, And so this character comes back to help them market and turn it into a real business after they produce an overwhelming amount of this of this garment. It becomes like the Ginny replacement Ginny garment. Um, And Mm -hmm. so they take this character who then builds up this whole company and realizes that in his back in back home conflict is still waging war and they're still spreading lies about the people here that he's gotten to know so he goes back home to open a school and start telling people that like what we were brought up to believe is not true which so i don't know the truth of the, the cultural context here <laughs> but on a story yeah. level and on a character level i found it to be really moving and really motivated and really authentic <laughs> Right. And it's like, if you were Pakistani, maybe you would take issue with them being like, oh, I'm taking a terrorist character and turning him around and saving him and showing that, you know, national peace and all of that. I get, I, and I it totally be, get that because yeah. that's where I'm coming at this strictly from a from a story <laughs> point of view, a character point of view, and then I, I'm just fascinated that they were able to pull this off. So I am yeah. interested in what are the reactions to this. Yeah. It's fascinating to put this <laughs> conflict, this side, right in the middle of this story because that's just not in the in the story. They really do. Yeah. <laughs> and you had mentioned Rupa, which become Rupa becomes the name of the clothing of brand. The garment, which actually, yes. it is a Rupa real is the Ginny character. Yeah. yeah, it is a real one. Oh my it's god, it's a real clothing company. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's why. <laughs> but it doesn't. It means it means I think the closest thing is to is like silver in Bengali. That's what it's not Rupa exactly, but it's a a derivation. Wow. Amount, yeah. Change in that. So, yeah, that's also like Bubba Gump Shrimp Company is not a real company in the U.S. Well, it is now. It is now. But, yeah. it's, it's funny I actually, that there's- I went yeah. for the first time just two weeks ago, coincidentally enough, oh, yeah. after I, I, had, I had already found out about the remake and my wife had to stop me from telling the yeah. staff there about it. <laughs> Did you? Oh, yeah. Do not. Do, do, do not. Do not, do not tell. They just work here. It's so funny. <laughs> Save your facts for a little bit. Yeah. Well, one of the one of the things that you had already brought up, which we were saving for this part, is Rupa the Jenny corollary, and like the fact that her story is very different because very well. Look at India; the hippie culture didn't exist in the same way, and that so we got to give her a completely different setup and situation, and perhaps countercultural thing. And is there a historical corollary because her plight is wanting to be an actress and? She's put in this mobster-ridden Bollywood of the 90s, which... It's not even that she wants to be an actress. She's strictly, and she says it over and over and over again, she just wants money. Right, right. We witness the murder of her mother, basically, which, again, is taking us into new territory. We don't... The mother's just absent in Forrest Gump, and we know that the the father is abusive. The father's abusive in this version in a completely different and wholly different way that you are are present for. Uh Um... And we understand that she is in this situation because of the financial class situation. And it's never about like she wants to be an actress and tell stories. It's strictly like she wants out of this class and she wants out of this financial situation. Money is the answer. So she's just chasing that wherever she can. So she finds a producer who's involved with the mob and bing, bam, boom. (laughs) She's in big stuff. Yeah. So that is based on something real, which if... We were in India in the 90s. We would have known a lot about. The actress was Monica Betty, and the mobster was Abu Salem. And this was a huge case. He got sentenced to life, conspiracy, to commit. And this is in the film, the 1993 Mumbai bomb blast, which killed over 250 people. This was a whole scandal between the two of them. She went to prison for a time. They got extradited from Portugal. I don't know if all of that is involved in this character's story, but this was all based on something that, people knew a lot about and it was related to a bunch of crazy stuff going on in Mumbai in the 90s as well so 
definitely one to one with it what rang that, authentic that man yeah. i was like i was like okay we're getting no hippie culture no black panthers yeah, yeah. we're in a different kind of mess here and i yeah. and i really appreciated it <laughs> Yeah. And even some of the lighter stuff, like the Elvis sort of thing, has to do with this Bollywood right. oh, star, Shah Rukh Khan. Yeah. yeah. And his signature <laughs> move, they pull like signature move of one cultural icon and signature move beautiful. of another. Yeah. You know, and I don't know who, I don't know that star, but yeah. I understand what they're what they're doing here. Oh, he's so huge. Great. Yeah. And I believe that was him. <laughs> yeah. So it's no, like I mean, a big I, I, deal I, I, that it's yeah, a cameo. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Obviously. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, the one thing then that maybe to end with final criticism i don't know much about it again because we're not in the thick of experiencing this history in real time but once things progress past to the current administration which started in the mid 2010s there starts to not be a lot of events related to them it's more just billboards in the background about anti-corruption movements but Hmm. people then that are critical of the state which again like i said there's the backlash of people saying that the main actor is against the state there mm-hmm. seems to have been some neutering or censorship of that as the script was being developed. But I guess it's the same thing in Forrest hmm. Gump, like where there's not a lot of criticism of right. the the current what's happening. So that's that's sort of what I could find as far as where people then as the movie progresses, they might take issue with. But perhaps that's the same problem that Forrest Gump had as well of like, well, it things definitely... aren't sunshine and rainbows right now either. Right. Yeah. It opens with a big, big block of text explaining that what you're seeing is an amalgamation and is fictional. <laughs> and that like right. it's not a th- like he is not real. Some of these events have been edited and should not be taken as educationally like accurate. Mm-hmm. Um, like they bends over backwards, so there's no mistaking that when the first like logos for the production companies come on screen, that you, what you're seeing is is a story. Yeah. Um, so I thought that was very very interesting and appropriate. Right, and that's the first sign yeah. that there was going to be a lot of talk on the, uh, about this. <laughs> well, and nowadays it's like anything. You know, I think when Forrest Gump, like you're talking about the context of the 90s it was designed in a way maybe to be oh look at this character who is just wading through politics in such an apolitical neutral Mm -hmm. just going through it way and so then well they tried to do that with this but uh people have opinions about what's happening right now so you know there's going to be both sides saying oh this is great it's showing an optimistic sense of nationalism and then there's people that are going to be saying no why aren't you being critical look at what's happening yeah hey that's art, baby. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. Oh, thank you, Taylor. This yeah, has been. Yeah. This was. This was really interesting. Um, Good on you for watching it. I mean, that's awesome. Man, you you love an it. opportunity yeah. like this just does not roll around. I like I said at the top of the show. I kind of jumped at the opportunity at something like this. This kind of budget. This kind of production value. This type of uh, bona fide American classic. I, I really behooved everybody out there. Please, yeah. uh, if you're still listening to my voice right now, consider this. Consider checking this out just on a creative level, just on a storytelling level, on a cultural mm-hmm. level. I, it's there's so, there's something here. This is really interesting stuff. I'm not, you know, I'm. It, I laughed. I cried. I saw Forrest <laughs> Gump for the first time again. Somehow, I don't know how that happened. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, Lord, uh, if you re- if you like this, please reach out to us. Let us know what you're reading. Let us know what you're watching. You never know when we'll do an episode about that thing you want to know all about. You can reach out to us at Illiterate Pod on Instagram or Illiterate Pod at Gmail dot com. And until next week, stay safe, everybody, uh, and we'll meet you back here with the facts.